the strange, the bizarre, the unusual, I like it. Gospel of Truth. Hello everybody, welcome to the strange, the bizarre, the unusual, I like it. I'm Roger Hansen and today I am going to be reading the Gospel of Truth. The Gospel of Truth is one of the Gnostic texts from the New Testament Apocryphalia found in the Nag Hammadi NHC. Or the Nag Hammadi Codex, Codices NHC. It exists in two Coptic translations, a subacomimic sub rendition surviving almost in full in the first codex, the Young Codex, and the Sahidic in fragments in the twelfth. The Gospels of Truth was probably written in Greek between 140 and 180 by Valentinian Gnostics or, as most posit, by Valentinian, by, by, by Valentinus himself. It was known to Irenaeus of Lyons who objected to its Gnostic content and declared it heresy. Ir Irenaeus declares it one of the works of the disciples of Valentinus, and the similarity of the work of others thought to be by Valentinus and his followers has made many scholars agree with Irenaeus Irenaeus <coughs> agree with Irenaeus on this point. Irenaeus is spelled I R E N A E U S. But the following of Valentinus, putting away all fear, bring forward their own compositions and boast that they have more gospels than really exist. Indeed, their audacity has gone so far that they entitled their recent composition The Gospel of Truth, though it agrees in nothing with the Gospels of the Apostles, and so no Gospel of theirs is free from blasphemy. For if what they produce is the Gospel of Truth, and is different from those the apostles handed down to us. Those who care to can learn how it can show from the scriptures themselves that then what is handed down from the apostles is not the gospel of truth. <clears throat> After its co Coptic translations and their burial at Nag Hammadi, the texts have been lost until the Nag Hammadi's discovery. 
The text is written with strong poetic skill, notably even in translation, and includes a heavily cyclical presentation of themes. It is not a gospel in the sense of an account of the works of Jesus of Nazarene, but is better understood as a homily. The text is generally considered by scholars one of the best written texts in the whole Nag Hammadi collection, considering its worth highly as both a great literary work and a Gnostic exegesis, exegesis on several gospels, conical and otherwise. <clears throat> Not all scholars, however, agree that the text is to be considered Gnostics or Gnostic. Patterson Brown has argued forcefully that the three Nag Hammadi Coptic Gospels of Thomas, Philip, and Truth are demonstrably not Gnostic in content, since each explicitly affirms the basic reality and sanctity of incarnate life which Gnosticism by definition considers illusory or evil. Are the Coptic Gospels Gnostics? <clears throat> the writing is thought to cite or allude to the New Testament Gospels of Matthew and John as well as 1 and 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Col Col Colossians, Hebrews, 1st John, and the book of Revelation. John's Gospels the most often. It is also influenced by Thomas. For instance, at one point, 22, 13 through 19, it cites John 3, 8 alongside Thomas 28. The text describes a theory of the rise of error in, person, in personified female form. The ignorance and yearning to see the father bred fear, which co coalesced into a fog by which error gained power. It then describes Jesus as having been sent down by God to remove ignorance. Jesus was a teacher confounding the other scribes and teachers in asserting they were foolish since they tried to understand the world by analyzing the law. But error grew angry at this and nailed Jesus to a tree. It also proceeds to describe how it is knowledge that grants salvation which constitutes eternal rest describing ignorance as a nightmare. Having next described the parable of the Good Shepherd in an esoteric manner, it then describes how feeding the hungry and giving rest to the weary is to be understood as feeding spiritual hunger and resting the world weary. This is followed by a parable about anointing the meaning of which is obscure, but may be connected with the way in which a sealed amphora meant it was full, a metaphor for knowledge. Having the final seal in the jigsaw, and you understand, but without it, the scraps of understandings you have put together can still be easily undone. But those whom he has anointed are the ones who have become perfect. For full jars are the ones that are usually anointed. But when the anointed of one jar is dissolved, it is emptied. And the reason for there being a deficiency is the thing by which its ointment goes. For at that time a breath draws it, a thing in the power of that which is within it, but from him who has no deficiency, no seal is removed, nor is anything emptied, but what he lacks the perfect father fills again. Aside from a final description of achieving rest by gnosis, the read, 
remainder of the text concerns a treatise on the connection between the relationship between the Son and the Father, and the relationship of a name to its owner. The prime example of this is the phrase it uses from the name of the Father is the Son, which is to be understood in the esoteric manner that the Son is the name, rather than as a meaning the Son was a name for the Father. Unlike the conical Gospels, <clears throat> this Gospel does not contain an account of Jesus' life or teaching. The Gospel, like some other Gnostic texts, can be interpreted as proclaiming predestination. One section states, Those whose name he knew in advance were called at the end, so that one who has knowledge is the one whose name the Father has uttered. For he who, whose name has not been spoken is ignorant. Indeed, how is one to hear if his name has not been called? Like other Gnostic texts, this Gospel places a strong emphasis on the importance of knowledge, Gnosis, for salvation. One excerpt states, Having knowledge, he does not will of the one who called him. He wishes to be pleasing to him. He receives rest. Each one's name comes to him. He who, who is to have knowledge is in his manner. He who is to have knowledge in this manner knows where he comes from and where he is going. Layton printed eight fragments of Valentinian literature, each a quote a church father claimed to take from the Valentinian corpus, also none of the Gospels of Truth. Layton further noticed that noted where the excerpts agree with one another. Fragment G, which Clement of Alexandria Stromatius 652-3-4 related to on friends asserts that there is shared matter between Gnostic Christian material and material found in publicly available books, which is the result of the law that is written in the human heart. Layton relates this to GTR 1934, when Jesus taught in their hearts appeared the living book of the living, which is written in the Father's thoughts and intellect both relying on a shared concept of pre-existent yet obscured knowledge which emanated from the father of the Gnostics. Fragment F also comes from the Stromatius 489 1-3 directed to the Gnostics. It calls the congregation children of eternal life in hopes that they will nullify the world without being yourself nullified. Layton relates the former to GTR 43.22 at the end of the work which emphasizes that the Gnostics are the Father's children and will live eternally. Layton relates the latter to GTR 2420, which for sir proposes to nullify the realm of appearance and then explains this as the world that lacks the Father. The concept that fear and the lack of knowledge are connected is evident. Having entered into the empty territory of fears, he Jesus passed before those who were stripped by the forgetfulness, being both knowledge and perfection, proclaiming the things that are in the heart of the Father, so that he became the wisdom of those who have received instruction. 
There is also the mention of an awakening brought about through the acquiring of knowledge and the dismissal of that which is not real, namely fear. Fear is not real because it does not come from the Father. That which is not light is not from the Father, such as a tree only brings forth only or one fruit such as a tree only brings forth one fruit the father only uh, only fruit the father's only fruit is light the level to which these writings express the power of the self in the coming of knowledge in the conflict of the innate perception that the average person is too weak too full of misconception to be able to lift themselves up is addressed. The theme of the Gospels is that Christ saves only those whom the Father gives to him. The average person is not poor in spirit, but ha, but hof, hofty, and thereby too weak to save himself without the sacrifice of God on our behalf. And that brings me to the end of that reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know, make a comment, give me a thumbs up, let me get, give me some feedback, let me know what you The strange, the bizarre, the unusual, I like it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.